Hey, welcome. My name is Chetan Walia. Welcome to Unlock Virtual Positioning. Welcome to the webinar. We have a great, exciting session, a lot of knowledge and a lot of practice lined up for you today. We'll be talking about specifically the 5C formula. We'll be talking about the pitch plan methodology later in the session. And before we go today, we will also be giving you a very special gift. So stay tuned in. Uh, follow it through and it's an exciting knowledge lined up. It's very relevant to today's times. It's absolutely relevant to the COVID era and I promise you, you'll be getting a lot more than you signed up for today. We'll be covering the 5C formula. We'll be talking a little bit about the introduction, about our story, what's the background. We'll be talking about 5Cs of your virtual potential. For some of you who are willing and able today, there's an opportunity to come right here on the camera with us so we can guide you through a process that's called a hot seat, but it's not as terrible as it sounds. It's going to be adding value to two or three of you who have the courage really to come on live and practice this with us. Then we'll be talking about a masterclass that we're launching shortly. It's called the Virtual Positioning Masterclass. Very briefly, we'll be introducing you, but more specifically within the masterclass introduction, I'll be taking you through the pitch plan formula, which is priceless, by the way. We, at the end of it, have a live Q&A, of course. You can ask anything that you want to, and we have a special gift for you, so stay tuned in right till the end. Put away your distractions, make today count. This is about you, it's not about us. It's really about value that we can provide to you. And that's the reason that we are here live is for you. So put away your distractions, listen carefully because we're only gonna be saying things once and it's very specific advice on you for how to make a greater impact really and how to create a greater influence for your audiences. We're gonna show you how Building a great virtual presence can have the greatest of impact and influence on whatever it is that you are spending your time on or whatever it is that you're doing really today. If you're intimidated or shy being on live video because you've never done it, of course, these times didn't catch anyone prepared. So if you're intimidated or you feel shy, we'll be covering it for you. We've got you covered. We'll be covering what you can do, exactly how you can build your confidence up and not let inhibitions come in between whatever impact and influence that you really have to create. You are here. You are here today because you obviously want to grow in your career, in your personal and professional life. You want to grow your impact. You want to grow your influence. We're going to show you today how you can do that. You're in the right place if you want to capture the virtual space. But really, the idea of going live kind of scares you. You're in the right place if you're worried about what you look like, what you would sound like, what you would talk about. And this fourth one was was like my 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 breaking point a couple of decades ago when I started interacting with live audiences. What will others think? I must share a story with you. Years ago, 1998 to be precise, I was doing my first ever session, all of 22 years old. I was in front of a senior management audience and those 25 people, there's nothing that can prepare you for it. I had rehearsed my content. I knew exactly what I want to speak about. But when I got onto that floor and I looked at those audience, you know, all that I saw was 25 pairs of eyes looking right into mine. And I was shattered, right? A 22 year old guy, probably the first time of public speaking and it was right there. What will these people think of you, Chetan? And I had those eyes look at me and my first session, you know what the body language I did it with? I was looking down and I just blurted out whatever I had rehearsed and that was my first session. It was a disaster. But hey, the good news is that you can learn these things. You get better at these things. You can practice these things. There is a method to these things. And that's what I want to help you today to cross over with me. There are, there are hesitations. Public speaking is documented as the number one fear. And there must be a reason for it. But it's overcome. It can be overcome. And let's do it together today. You're in the right place if you're not sure how you will position and probably sell your products and services. And we'll show you how with the pitch plan method. But first, let me take you a little bit of a background about us and then we'll straight away dive into the five C's. I started my career or we started our company in 1998. We have generated for our clients over $3 billion in value of business, of value, of vision, of goals that they didn't know existed. We, in the process, have learned, that's that's what we do. We, we, we know what is it to make other people successful. I have dedicated my life to it, and I will be dedicating the rest of my life to it. That's what we do. That's what we live for. That's what we discover. And in the process of 
uh, communicating with various clients and businesses world over, we have perfected a nine-step pitch framework that works in every situation. It's complete departure from the 1980s world of this ABCs of selling. This is the method that works. This is the method that takes a person from one place comfortably and safely to the place of making a decision. And for the first time ever, live here on the free webinar, we're going to be disclosing this method. So stay tuned. That's towards the end of this presentation. We have worked with the best of companies. You're in great company today, right here, right now, because a lot of these companies are present. I can see the list and I could see on the people who have joined in. You are from all the great companies, wonderful places. We have people here from all over the world. You're in good company. We worked with the best. You're in the safe fans. At any point of time during this presentation, let me tell you a bit about my team. There's Malvika standing by monitoring the chat box right here. So anytime that you have a question, put it in the question box. It's at the below of the GoToWebinar window that you see. There's a chat room right there. I, I love to read your messages. So I'll be going through each and every comment that you have. Hopefully, I'll find a way to address it during the Q&A. So feel free to post anytime in the chat or in the questions whenever you have. And we'll sure enough pick it up with you. Malvik and Smriti are monitoring the chat box. Roli is right here with me. She'll be joining you shortly for the Q&A as well. And let's delve into it. Mastering an impactful and a profitable message today means that you are no longer asking the question, how do, how do I sell this or how do I make an impact or what will others think of me? But you instead begin to use these five C's of virtual positioning to create an inevitable positioning and success. And here's how you will do it. Live video today, by the way, is most effective marketing tool, especially post COVID era. It's free. And in 2020, during and post the COVID, it's an absolute necessity. You can't do without it. And just to look at a few statistics, Zoom went from 10 million daily active users in March 2020, 23rd March or 25th March was the lockdown, and 300 million in April 2020. 82% of people, this is a study done by Vimeo and YouTube, prefer live video over a brand that is just have a recorded video, so to say. And this is the most important statistics. And, and get a measure of this. Cisco conducted an, an analysis recently, and they have concluded that by 2021, 80% of all business, regardless of the outcome of COVID, will be concluded right here on video calls and Zoom calls. So this is here to stay. All the skills that we learned about selling and rapport building and stuff are very soon going to become redundant because people will need to master, they will need to acquire the skill to get on a live video, quickly make an impact and get the job done. And Cisco's analysis says that by the end of 2021, regardless of the outcome of COVID, live video is here to stay. You will have to conclude 80% of your deal making will have to happen on a video call, whether you use a Zoom or whether you use MS Team or Google Meet or whatever it is, but it has to be done online. So let's get into the five C's now of unlocking your virtual positioning. And here is the first one. And here are the keys to unlocking your virtual potential, connection, clarity, certainty, consistency, and creativity. Let's delve into the first one, connection. Now, the most difficult thing as a result of moving to these Zoom calls and live videos has been the establishing of connection and the most important one in making an impact on any, whether it's live with you or in person, you have to be able to connect to the other side, authentically connect to build trust, to build intimacy. But what's happened to people as a result of the lockdown in the initial days, what happened to people was they were homebound, right? And they didn't have these rules as to how they are to present on a live video and they didn't know what's to be done. So by default, people thought it's very cool. Let's get all roughed up. Let's wear our dirtiest t-shirts. Let's be unshaven. Let's have these long burly hair. It's almost come to be known as the lockdown look. And I want to tell you something today and listen to it very carefully because I know half the people on the other side of this webinar, you're looking just like that and it sucks. And it sucks for this reason, whatever it is that you're not going to turn up into a client place looking like, please don't do it on a live video with your colleagues because you're just simply killing and murdering the impact that you're making. I have seen and I've attended Zoom calls with crazy looking backgrounds and dimly lit rooms and dirty looking background pictures and all of that in people. Please don't do that. You for one moment won't convince me that you can't find a three foot corner that looks tidy enough so that you can make an impression. 
your impression making, your deal making has simply been replaced instead of being face to face with a person by a screen of a video. And if you are not taking care of very simple basic things, you are killing it. You are ruining it for yourself. Because this is the way, remember, Cisco says that 80% of the way forward is going to be just this. Now you're going to rise up to the challenge. And the way to connect with people and the second rule that I want to share with you about connection is eye contact. Now, on a Zoom screen, of course, because we are guided by traditionally the way that we make eye contact is look into people's eyes. That's not the way you can make eye contact and with you, you got to look into the camera. You got to take your finger, for example, put it right here like this. That's the test. And when your screen covers up, that's where you got to be looking. Eye contact is absolutely important to establish a connection. And if you're not able to do that on live video, you don't have to look at people in their eyes. You have to look into the camera. And these two things, your appearance, your background and your eye contact, these three things are missing in most people's presentations or most people's connection in a live video. And they kill it in the first minute. No one's interested. So that's the simple thing about connection. And I'm going to go deeper into connection itself. Imagine for a moment, I want to ask you a question and please feel free to type the answers in the chat box right away. What does it feel like when in the audience you see someone who is underconfident, someone who's not coming across as top of his mark or knowledge, and that's the speaker that you're interacting with? So how does it feel to you when you hear someone who's shabbily dressed, who's underconfident and presenting to you in a live manner or even in a public forum? How does it feel to you? Let's, let's put it in the chat box. How do you feel? And even without reading these chat messages, I can tell you the most popular answer which I get in response to this question is people say that they feel uncomfortable seeing someone uncomfortable and inconfident. And that's the thing about connection. If you don't make it, you are making your audience uncomfortable. And an uncomfortable audience is not going to take a decision in your favor, will they? Connection, making audience comfortable is your number one requirement as a speaker, as a person who's trying to make an impact. Whether you're trying to make a sale, whether you're presenting a course like this, whether you're conducting a webinar or you're simply on a call, on a management review meeting in your office or whatever it is, making audience comfortable if you happen to be speaking is your job. Now, when we come to take that as a responsibility upon us and public speaking or live video speaking in generally causes a lot of anxiety. It's the number one documented fear ahead of death and ahead of anything that you would see. And people feel anxious, right? Anytime that you would be about to take on a journey of public speaking, speaking to 10 people or 100 or 2000, you feel anxious. Now, the way to deal with anxiety is very simple. It's this. A lot of people, when they get anxious, what do they do? They find all sorts of escapes. Let me put on a music gear. Let me watch something. Let me crack a joke. Let me get a drink. No, don't escape it. Acknowledge your anxiety. The way to deal with anxiety, and I learned this a long time back when I was sharing that story with you that I was anxious and I was looking down and making my presentation. I want to tell you something. The best way to deal with anxiety is to acknowledge it to yourself. Tell yourself, I'm anxious about going on the stage and it's fine. Let's deal with it. And that ends it. Try it next time. When you're about to get on an important meeting or an important call where you're going to be judged and 20 odd people are going to be watching you, try telling yourself very calmly, my friend, you are anxious and it's absolutely fine. Let's delve into it. And that's the end of anxiety, really. The other thing that I want to tell you about making a connection, this is a live interaction, right? This is not a performance. In a performance, is when you've gone for a music show or a rock show or a theater or a movie is playing. That's a performance. That's a one-way communication, right? This, this is not a performance. This is a conversation. And in a conversation, there is no right or wrong way. You could be very straight and blunt to the point. You could be humorous and make jokes. Or you could sing along and talk. There is no right or wrong way as long as you're establishing a connection. So don't be conscious of the way you speak because there is no right way. This is not a performance. In a performance, there's a right way because my performance will impact the performance of 10 other people. If I am going for a music concert and if I'm, uh, if I'm performing on stage, if I miss a beat or I miss a note, it misses it for the entire troupe. But not here. This is a communication. I can scream, I can be soft, and there is no right or wrong way because it's communication. So as long as I've established a connection, it's absolutely okay. And because this is a conversation, you got to reframe it as a conversation, right? I can't be 
talking to you a script jargon loaded or oh, nine steps first one is this and by the way correct my English and all no it has to come across as a conversation and when you have a conversation with people that you haven't met before what do you need to do you need to smile you can't just be on a monologue and go on and bore people because that's not a conversation in a conversation even if you're speaking a lot you got to make your eye contact you got to smile you got to look presentable you got to look decent so that people feel like conversing with you and that's the way to make connection treat it as a conversation not as a performance clarity the second c is clarity now this is where people make a mistake we get conscious of speaking to let's say there's 700 people on this webinar today you have to speak to all 700 but all 700 have to feel that you are having a conversation with them so here's the way to do it you pick up one ideal client of tar and in your head you speak to one person and you'll speak to all 700 right and here's how to do it you all are here for example today i'm speaking to all of you but in my mind i have this image of one person and that one person who needs to know how to make a virtual impact how to make a virtual influence how to increase their virtual presence how to deal with issues of clarity confidence and creativity to get tips on how to make a perfect sales pitch and all that's rolled out into one person and i'm addressing one person and by virtue of addressing that one person i'm individually speaking to all 700 of you and that's what you got to simplify it for yourself to have that clarity there might be 40 people watching you in a zoom call you might be in a board meeting with 20 other stakeholders but you got to identify your client of tar your ideal of tar roll all the issues into that one person look into the camera address that one person everyone will feel that you're having a conversation with them and that's the principle of clarity speak to your ideal client of tar let's go on to the next one certainty now i want to explain this as a very simple difference between confidence and certainty confidence is a feeling that i can do this right certainty is a feeling that i've got this i will do this and that's the bridge between confidence and certainty and there are three specific strategies that i want to share with you on creating a certainty in your own mind as well as the mind of the people who are viewing you we we said in the last slide that it's a conversation that we are having when we are on this live interaction like a webinar or a zoom call or whatever it is that you do and when you want to have a conversation with someone for example with someone that you don't know what do you do you ask questions it's common sense isn't it so start with questions always start a presentation with question go back and replay this i'm 100% certain i would have started it with a question i started with a question for example how do you feel when you hear an inconfident speaker that's to get you engaged that's to gather dialogue and when you start a conversation with a question it's a dialogue and then it's important to use conversational language because you're speaking you want to engage other people you want to feel that you're a part of them and that takes conversational language unfortunately people get on calls and people get on video calls and what not these days and they they they'll have a bunch of slides which full of jargon they'll read business they'll read out business language the court books and authors and try to be as perfect as the queen's english but that's not a conversation we have in our daily lives do we so have a conversational language conversational language is just this ask questions be it's okay to make a mistake it's okay to pause a little bit it's okay to not always look at that right spot in the video it's fine all a part of a conversation and the best way to get into a conversational dialogue is to stay in the present moment a lot of times you'll come in front of audiences and your mind starts to running into future consequences what will happen after the presentation what will be the kind of questions will people get what i'm trying to say or what, how would i appear how would i look like all of that is future consequences and by thinking about it you move into a future space bring yourself into the present moment because when you're in the present moment you'll have a conversation here's what i do when i have to come into the present moment let's say i have these slides with me and i want to present it to you today i do two things one i try to get into my material as much as possible so that i don't have to start reading from slides and that gets me into the present moment and there's the second thing that i've always done right 1998 i did my first trading program and i used a certain music out there which kind of gets into the mood which gets participants into the mood as well and from 1998 until today's 2020 i've used the same music so whenever i hear that little piece of music 2 minute 
a three minute audio, it gets me into the present moment. And when you start from the present moment, it builds, conf it builds uh, confidence, it builds certainty, it builds clarity, and there is no better way to make a presentation than from the present moment. Then comes consistency. I'll keep this short because what I've captured here on screen is worth an understanding in itself. Whenever you got to make a change, whenever you got to achieve something, these, the achievement that we are, for example, talking about today is making an impact in live video. Success does not come from intensity. It comes from frequency. Doing it over and over again than doing it right one time. Take an example. Whenever you've tried to lose weight, for example, in your life, right? It's, it's a terrible thing, isn't it, to get into that zone. But whenever you've done it, you go the first day, you will diet and you will starve yourself and you will go run five kilometers or walk. You'll do everything in that first week and you'll build intensity and then go fuck. And no success comes because the weight game comes back. It does not come from intensity. It comes from frequency. So do it lesser. Do it less accurately. Instead of five kilometers, do one kilometer, but do it every single day. And that is consistency. And when you can do it consistently, that's the way. That's our third C rather to be unlocking your virtual positioning in a manner. And we come to creativity. Now, creativity by definition is doing something novel that is equally useful as well and not just a novelty factor. And there are three or four things that I want to point out to you today about creativity. Every presentation or every Zoom call or everything that you are trying to get in front of a client, especially in these live modules, has to have an element of novelty or creativity. Because if you're repeating the same thing that a person has seen in 10 different webinars or 10 different sessions or 10 different books or 10 different presentations or review meetings, they lose interest very fast. Virtual attention spans are even lesser than whatever the millennial spans had come down to. And virtually what will keep people's attention and what will keep them hooked it's some novel information that is equally useful as well. So don't forget the useful bit because otherwise we'll end up making some weird sketches and presentations which won't really go down well, right? So get out of your own way is my number one advice on creativity. What blocks the creative potential or creative expression is this, that you get in your own way by your knowledge and expertise, yeah? So your knowledge and your expertise interfere with the ability to be creative because the assumption of expertise is I know it all. You don't know it all. You don't know novelty. So think of novelty and build some novelty into the presentation. It can be in your concept. It can be the way that you've designed it. It can be the way that you're presenting it. It can be the way that you're speaking. It can be the way that you're looking as long as it's novel and as long as it's useful to the other side. There has to be an element of creativity to be able to build attention on the other side or to be able to build attraction and connection from the other side. Reframe your knowledge and reframe your expertise as an opportunity. The speaking online or the video call or making an impact online is not a problem. It's an opportunity. If that's the way that the world is going to get to, and mind you, no one in the world is ready for that change, and that's an opportunity. If you can get on top of it, if you can crack that one problem, that's a tremendous opportunity that you can capitalize on. Another thing that you can do and people must do is slow down and listen. I have been to innumerable Zoom calls in the last six months and it's so difficult to get into a conversation because people are busy talking. They're not paying attention to who's on the call or not. So while they're talking and because they're sitting alone by themselves, they lose a sense that who is listening to them or not. They go on blabbering and go on talking. I think to be able to make an impact online or even offline, but online particularly, you got to slow down and listen. And you got to slow down and listen what's happening to people, what they're saying and what they're not saying. Because once you listen, you have a greater ability to make an impact. And the reason why I've been telling you, put your comments in chats and put your questions and load up with all that you've got is because I want to listen. And if I listen to you, I can answer you and I can make an impact on you. But if I'm not listening to you, I'm going on talking on a word burst, then there's no impact to be made really. So all the time that you're watching this, I'm actually listening. I'm being fed right now into every single chat message in question and I'm replaying it in my mind while I'm talking to you because it's absolutely critical to listen and weave everything into a story. I'm not saying you have to be a great storyteller or something, but like this, in a manner, if I have to present to you the keys to 
making an impact online, I broke it down into a formula, into a 5C kind of a formula. And it's important to be able to do that. So the formulas or stories or some little bit of anecdotes here and there, I've been sharing with you my stories, the not so pleasant ones, how I felt the first time I was publicly speaking. All of that adds up into building authenticity because it, it makes it personal. And I want you to be able to do that. So creativity is not just about coming up with some wacko idea. It's about getting out of your own way so that you can think of something novel, so that you can use this opportunity, listen to other people and feed it back to them in terms of a story. Allow me to sum this up for you. The five C's. The first C was connection. And connection means make eye contact. Connection means be clear about what it is. Connection means to be able to have a conversation. This is not a performance. So connect at a personal, individual level with someone in your audience so that they feel that it's a conversation between you and them. Look presentable. Make your place presentable. This is You might be working from home, but it's work time. It's not home time. Don't look shabby. Don't ruin it for yourself. There's nothing called a lockdown look. It's called you making an impression look. And please decide what impression you really want to make. The second C was clarity. Choose your avatar, speak to one person, be clear about what the issues are, address them with a smile, with a conversation, with questions that are relevant. You speak to one person properly, you speak to all 700 of them properly. Certainty comes from knowing your content, knowing what is on screen so that you don't have to keep looking at it again and again. A little glance here and there is fine. But be certain about what is it that you want to speak about, what is the purpose, how you're going to get there. More certain you are, more ready your audience is to listen to you. Then it's about consistency. And remember, it's not about intensity, it's about frequency. Doing the things that you're certain about, doing the things that you're confident about, over and over again, repeatedly, day in and day out. And that is consistency. Consistency builds an impression, not intensity. Intensity, you'll get it right one time, second time, and then, and then it'll all be going down the hill. And our last C was creativity. That especially in an online, in a virtual environment where attention spans are low, you need a bit of novelty, you need a bit of uniqueness, you need a bit of zest in your things, something new for people to absorb so that they remain hooked to your content and hooked to you as a person. I want to introduce you to a phrase that you probably haven't heard of or you've heard it differently. Normally you see ready, aim and fire and I want to call this particular section ready, fire and aim. Because as I said, there is no right way or wrong way. So you can always fire in life and you can learn based on that firing and take aim again. So ready, fire and aim. And I want to introduce to you this concept right here, live out here, where I would invite now and right now some one or two of you and please start posting it on the chat who want to experiment using these five C's right there live so that I can coach you just for about a minute or two. All you'll have to do is come online here. We'll give you the access. You can put your video on and we'll ask you to share anything. I will give you a bit of structure, a 15, 20 second introduction and allow us really right now, allow us to coach you and let's see if that makes a difference. Yeah. So is there any brave soul who is ready and willing? Please start typing right now in the chat. Take a bit of a risk. It's going to add tremendous value to you. That's something that I promise. I will do it right now with you in presence of all these wonderful people. We will give you exact tips and you will be doing a great service to everybody else, by the way, because they will get feedback too based on you just coming online on screen right away. So I'm going to stop the screen share right now. I'm going to check these chat messages. And one of you, please be ready and please nominate yourself. It's just a risk. It's just a very simple risk. It's not even a risk. It's going to add value to you. And take that risk with me right now. And I promise you, within three minutes, we'll make your presentation and speaking ability far better. So who's up for it? I'm going to stop the share, but I'll still be live with you in a moment. Hello, right, we do we have someone rolling? Yeah, we have. But even before I call him, uh, uh, I have mailed you the email ID. You can make him the panelist. Meanwhile, uh, just a very quick one before we move further. There have been feedback from some audience about audio and connectivity, and we've been trying to resolve it. It could be because of the rains, could be because of connectivity. I would just request you to hang on for a while and try to be with the lag because it improves over the time. So just a quick one here on that. 
Uh, meanwhile, we the volunteer that we will have is Ankur Malik. And uh, once he's made the panelist, Ankur, um, I'm glad that you wrote and reached out to try with us. So that's the first step. So congratulations. Um, we'll be pleased to have you shortly on screen. Uh, meanwhile, as this process is happening and you will be on video, um, just, just one question someone was uh, asking and I just want to quickly brief on that. Meanwhile, on the back end, this is happening. Uh, someone had posted to us that how to make that connection. So uh, as far as about the connection and we have, we will have more discussion on that, but it is as rightly said in the, during the presentation, it's about that confidence. It's about, uh, you know, creating that eye contact as far as the logistics of it. And of course, staying with the problem of whosoever you are wanting to make a connection with. So, so just approach with that confidence and stay with that person for a while. And I'm joined by Ankur. Ankur, welcome and um, thank you for writing. And over to you, Chetan. Ankur has been uh, volunteering and wanting yeah. to. Ankur, you'll have to unmute yourself so that we can hear you. Right now, you are muted. There'll be a mic problem. Good evening, good evening sir. My pleasure to be here. The good evening, yeah. Ankur. It's a brave thing to do. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. So we're glad that you've nominated yourself. And just give me a minute and I'll be with you. If someone else wants to nominate themselves, now is the time because otherwise we'll move forward. So, Ankur, very simple. All we want you to do is just about for 20 to 30 seconds very brief intro to yourself who you are where you are from and what brings you here today and how are you experiencing this session so very briefly for 20 or 30 seconds over to you it's all yours i'm going to off my video while you are speaking and so is roly so over to you and then we'll come back to you after you're done all right have, exactly okay. thank you hello everybody good evening i am ankul malik i'm from bilai chhattisgarh i have been a manufacturer of ready mix concrete and currently i'm building my own startup which is focused on livelihoods and building a circular economy uh, what brings me here is the fact that i really admire chetan sir and i'm a big fan of his in a very short period of time and i wanted to just uh, understand how much how better i can uh, you know come on screen and i wanted to learn about it so that that brings me here thanks all right, Ankur, so great. Good job. You are smiling, so that's good. So just let's let's uh, try a couple of things, all right? Uh, next time that you want to speak, right, one is to look straight into the camera. Sit up straight. You don't have to lean into the laptop. So you can sit up straight, make eye contact with the camera, wherever your camera is, and try and be a little louder. I'm not focusing on the content right now. Try and be a little louder. In the sense, you remember these olden times where when I was growing up and there were no mobile phones and stuff, there used to be landlines. And I remember very funnily, whenever there used to be an outstation call, everyone's volume used to go up for some strange reason, right? It just had to be a call from somewhere outside and people would start speaking loudly. So imagine that this is that outstation call so you can speak loudly. If you have to err on one side, if you have to make an error on one side, you'd rather make the error on speaking loudly than speaking softly, right? So eye contact smile and be a bit more vocal and be happy about being here and that's it just do these three things and it makes a big difference and as straight up as you can sit the better it is and get into it so we will give you five or seven seconds to absorb this i'm going to off my video again and so will roly and in three seconds over to you and breathe Yeah. Yeah, so uh, today I'm glad to be in front of all of you and I really want to ask you a couple of questions first before I start off my conversation with you all. The first is that um, uh, how many of you are uh, worried about your livelihood or are looking forward for somebody to work along with you but are not uh, ready to get the right person on board? Or uh, I would like to say that how many have of you have seen uh, a lot of underprivileged people or, uh, you know, people from the marginalized or bottom of the pyramid on the streets and how many of you have thought to help them out but uh, could not find an opportunity to do so. So here I am, Ankur Malik, we are uh, a startup from Bilai Chhattisgarh and we are uh, launching our web portal teamwork help in a couple of weeks. I wish to welcome you uh, to have a look at it and please I me um, you know a, a lot of good feedback is good for us so looking forward for that 
and looking forward to connect more more and more from you and um, uh, this was uh, uh, the first part which i wanted to talk about and the second part uh, of uh, my uh, uh, conversation with you today i want, just want to have a replay of what i have learned from uh, chetan sir about the past the present and the future so to all the aspiring entrepreneurs entrepreneurs i would just like to stay, say that the past is already dead so don't live it with it and the future is uncertain it's uh, it's a concept of psychological time which something takes you to the future and you know uh, you just aspire to be something which you are not and uh, it brings a lot of difficulties uh, uh, be something which you are not so this i have learned from um, chetan sir and i want everybody to practice being present in the moment uh, you just have to be attentive forget the past forget the future just be present and keep learning and keep rocking so i hope to connect with all of you and although it's the first time speaking like this uh, all new experience i've been a big fan of loli ma'am too i was just concerned about one thing that now when i'm speaking something which is off context and when i want to sell something uh, and add context so when i am uh, trying to do that then uh, maybe i'll be facing some hitches or glitches in the beginning but i am sure i'm going to let then... me stop you let let yes. me stop you now for someone who was shy to come on and for someone who said he was reserved that's a lot of talking to do so well <laughs> that that's that's really nice to see we will answer your question second part of the presentation is focused on the sales environment and how do you make a pitch and what do you need to be covered on uh, what was great about the second half of your presentation was the eye contact and the smile and i think as long as you're doing that content comes second as long as you establish a connection which you did i think it was good that you were talking to one person and i think that's what we were trying to show to people that as long as you take care of the basics the other things follow so well done thank you for being here i would request you to off your video and mute yourself don't forget about that so that we can move on with this and go on to the next one so meanwhile while ankur was uh, kind of on screen and we were having that experience there were a set of people and i'm sorry we really can't take all we will have to make that uh, choice of you know not being able to because i have more than one request here so smriti who's going uh, live for us between the options that i had shared with you if you can share the name we'll quickly have uh, another person also practice it right here All right let's have one more and then we will move on with the rest of the presentation and it's so great for people who are Abhishekta um, Abhishekta we will uh, we are making you panelist and uh, you have to do exactly how ankur did you will once you are made the panelist you will be switching on your video and putting your mic on mute and then let's have a listen so you can just on your video put your mic on we're waiting for you i made you the panelist so Hello. Yeah, yeah. Arushikta, we, we get to see your video. We can hear your voice. Put your oh. video on. Yeah. Hello. Hi, hey. Arushikta. Yeah. Hi. Good to right. see you. You don't look scared at all, as much as you were trying to say on the chat. <laughs> um, well, I was. I mean, I uh, Uncle Mari kind of. Uh, <laughs> he, he was actually encouraging. I mean, I, I saw him after wow. that when your were off. So I was like, okay, fine, let's just do that. Okay. <laughs> so um, over to you. Okay. Over to you. Twenty thirty seconds. Just let us know about you and what brings you here. Okay. So um, good evening, everybody. My name is Abhishekta. I am currently in Bangalore. I am actually from a company called Daily Rounds. It's a startup. It's a medical lab startup. Actually, we help the students to, uh, uh, you know, appear for the NEET PG examinations. People who are associated with that, uh, uh, what do you want to say, the PG uh, thing, education system, they would really know this. Why I attended this today was because I was informed of this amazing webinar by my uh, manager today. We had a, a meeting, and then I was informed that why don't you? Because uh, as we were discussing in this presentation, we really have to move to the online uh, factor completely and our application is also an online based app so we are trying to venture out more in the uh, webinar form maybe so this was a very good uh, approach i got like a 
I mean, I got okay. to learn a lot of things. All right, Let me things. stop you. Let me just give you a little, a little bit of feedback and tips to make this better for you. Uh, number yeah. one, uh, there are over 500 people on this webinar. So don't worry about those 500. Worry about one person. Imagine that you're only speaking to me or to Roly and forget everyone else, right? Second thing, before you start, just take a deep breath so that it brings you into the moment. Don't worry about what people will think or not, right? They don't, they, they're not as brave as you, so they're not here and you are, so that's a great thing. And the third thing, next time you start speaking, don't look at the screen, don't look at me, and don't look at Roly, look at, look at right into the camera, right? Keep your sentences small and let's try again. Sit up straight, look into the camera, you're only talking to me, no one else. So we're gonna switch off our videos, imagine me on the other side, take a deep breath and start. Yeah. So uh, hi, here again, I'm going to try this again. So uh, thing is, I joined this webinar today because of the fact that we are planning to completely in our company, since it's a startup, we have to move to an online venture. So webinar seemed kind of a pretty good way to, you know, talk to a lot of other students because our target audience are students basically. So uh, we have domestic and we have international students. So uh, previously we had field agents to go there, but then now we literally have to rely on the webinar thing. We tried it, it was not that much of a success. So therefore uh, I believe that today, whatever we learn, maybe you know this part, at least we can inculcate a little bit of it. And henceforth, I am expecting that we can improve a lot on that. Let's see what happens till the end. So yeah, thank you. So wonderful wonderful that was great that about was great. improving the improvement is right here evident with that lovely jaw to jaw smile and that confidence in the eyes so i mean i mean where was this care at the very first place and perfectly you metamorphose into something which is so also right there wow thank you for your presence abhi so yeah. <laughs> yeah okay thank you Great, Abhishekta. well done well done thank you for taking this with us and uh, for all the people who are out there right just off your video and mute yourself because otherwise your audio will interfere thank you thank you so much uh, so it was great to have this, isn't it? I mean, this was just about a little bit of tips for 15 or 30 seconds to these people. I don't know if you can notice the finer points, but the presence becomes so much better when someone is able to look into the camera and have that confidence and belief and when they can come right into the moment. So that's what we were trying to do, just to give you a bit of an insight into how this thing can work. I think we can go back to our presentation. Uh, we'll be talking now specifically about the program that is coming through and more specifically and more interestingly in the next half we'll be taking you through the pitch plan methodology so another 15 or 20 minutes of this and then we'll be back here again for the live q a right all right a little bit of coaching can make a great difference and i want to introduce you to now specifically to an event that we're launching in september and alongside that the pitch plan methodology is what i want to really take you through as to how to create and structure a method by which you can actually make an impact. So the event is called Virtual Positioning uh, Mastery. This is the only event of this kind that we'll be doing in 2020, by the way. And it's important that you get to understand what we'll do here. So starting September 14, for five days, we will meet every day, two to three hours on a call. And we will specifically be focusing on two things. One is to get you perfect in the pitch plan methodology, which is coming up shortly. And the other is to get you the coaching, the support with me, with Roly, and our team will be there to guide you, to support you into making your virtual presence a reality, to hone up your speaking skills, your presentation skills. How do you, what do you need to think of? These five C's was just an example of what we'll do. Over 30 hours of input between September 14th to 18th and then 21st to 25th. And that's not it. We'll finish the course where we've given you all the tools and techniques of pitch plan, all the tools and techniques of making an impact virtually, how to create your impact and influence. And then we we'll leave you for two weeks to go out there and practice it in the real world. You come back with your pointed questions after two weeks that you tried something, it didn't work, or you tried something and you made mistakes. And on October 4, roughly about after a week that we finished the course, we spent three to four hours again in answering your specific questions. And then again, repeat that process after two weeks. It's really 30, 40 hours of solid input and personalized coaching, an example of which you saw today. 
in that very focused manner to take you from a point on a position no matter where you are you might be an expert or you might not be an expert you might be a novice at public speaking you might be a complete rock star and you might not be but we will add value to you so that you are at least 10 20 times better than whatever your position right now may be it's going to be applicable to you if you're going to for example doing deal making virtually you might be from a sales background you might be from a leadership background as a leader it's absolutely relevant and important that you can make an impact on your audience or you might just be starting out you might be a freelancing consultant or a trainer or a coach then you're in our boat and we know how to take you there you might be starting out in something you might be a chartered accountant you might be a lawyer you might be anything the way you present and conduct yourself today online decides how the world is seeing you how your positioning is set and we wanted to introduce a course to be able to help people to master that because remember going forward 80 percent of business is going to be done virtually and if you're unable to make a connection and an impact virtually you're going to lose 80 percent of an opportunity so when Without delaying much, let me introduce you to Pitch Plan, which is really the cornerstone of this training. Now, Pitch Plan is a method that we have perfected. It's, gone, it's taken 20 years of experience to make it so simple. Pitch Plan is an acronym for the nine steps that you see in front of your screen. It's a method to construct your content, to construct your sales content if you're making a sales presentation, to conduct a review content if it's a review presentation, to conduct, to conduct anything. And pitch plan is the method is this. The first P stands for prize yourself. You got to be in a position that people want to listen to you. And that's a step that is called prizing. It's very uh, opposite of the traditional sales method, which says, oh, let's build a rapport and hello and hi and how are you and let's start. Lara. No, sir. Prizing starts that at the very start, at the very beginning of the presentation, you are the prize. And that's how the audience should view you if you need to reach a closure or make an impact. So that specific strategy is called prizing. The second I stands for info control. Now, a lot of times, and especially I'm, I'm relating it to a sales presentation because it's very easy to understand. In a sales situation, a lot of people want to give other side a lot of importance that I want to structure it to you and you are important. Of course, that is. But you got to take control. If I am presenting, it's in my control what to show you and not. And that inferring control, it's called, it's a technique called framing. And unless you have frame control, you will not be able to seize any value out of the presentation of the deal. How to stay in control, when to give it, when to get it back. These are the nuances, but it's absolutely critical. The first two steps of pricing and taking control of a meeting or a presentation will decide what's the end result you can drive or not. So those are the two techniques that, uh, that the pitch training begins with. And then it goes to the big idea. Now, a lot of times people like are kind of, let's say if I was to talk to you about this webinar, a lot of times people get into talking about the features and webinars uh, or, or benefits and this is what my course will cover. No one's interested in that. What's the bloody big idea? And that's the way to seize the opportunity, to seize the control. How does it make you better? How does it have an impact on the world? The big idea is that 80% of the world is going to be doing business online. And if you don't worry about and you don't better your virtual persona and presence, you're going to lose 80% of the opportunity. Now, does that sound more appealing or would it sound more appealing that I'll teach you A, B and C? You get the point. The next step is to create leverage. So while I'm pricing, while you are in free control and while you're presenting a big idea, you need to have strategies and communication infliction points by which you can create leverage. By leverage, we mean leverage over the people that who are viewing you or who are attending your presentation. And that's the fourth specific strategy of the pitch process. The fifth one and the most intriguing one is to be able to have a great story to tell. You can have the most awesome content in the world, but it has to be woven into a story. It has to have a it has to have a protagonist, it has to have a villain, it has to have a bit of an intrigue that reveals in the end. For example, I'm going to be revealing a gift to you in the end. I told you right at the beginning, it has to have all the elements of a great story because when it does, you make your greatest impact and stories are what people remember. They won't remember your slides. They won't remember your presentation. They won't remember how the meeting went. But if a story touched them, they'll surely remember it. The sixth stage of it is to position the close. Have an agenda in your head that you want to reach at the end of the presentation. Now, it could be a follow-up meeting. It could be a sales 
decision. It could be a future negotiation. You might be trying to influence someone, but what is it that you really want? And you got to position it right in the middle of the presentation, not that 1980s ABC sales formula where they say leave the fast last five minutes for the negotiation. As soon as you've told your story and build intrigue, you got to position the close. The seventh stage is about locking the hook point. You would have identified by your interaction by now, there is a hook point that's hooking this audience. You got to lock it, you got to cement it because that's the decision making point. The eighth and the more, most important thing which businesses don't do, you got to absorb the risk of dealing with you. For example, for the last 20 years, I must, I've worked in over 250 companies, done workshops, done seminars, coached people, done leadership work in over 25 countries. In each of my business proposal, I've always maintained that whenever in life you feel that my work didn't add value to me, drop a meal to any of my associates, save yourself the embarrassment of even talking to me, and we will refund your money back, no questions asked. I've got a 100% success rate, sir. No one has ever asked for a refund because... The, the very virtue of me being able to guarantee that puts pressure on me to add more value than you signed up for. This is a free webinar. You came here to listen to five C's. I'm just here to add more value because that's how I think. That's what I do. And that's why I'm introducing you to Pitch Plan. Absorbing risk is a critical element of making a successful content pitch or anything that you're doing. Take away the risk of having to deal with you. And then when you take away the risk of having to deal with you, the final step in the pitch plan is to still nail it. Right. At the times that people come to the closure stage, a lot of people become needy. If you're asking someone to sign up, for example, you become needy. If you're asking someone to write a check for you, you become needy. If you're asking for a promotion, you become needy. Neediness kills more deals than anything in this world. And we want to give you strategies and tools in this virtual masterclass, which takes away those neediness of yours and replace it with strategies that the neediness goes on to the other side. That, in a nutshell, is our pitch plan method. And this is the practical explanation of it in the next, in the next slide. Right in front of you, people who are on the other side expect a certain sequence. They don't know it. For example, you're watching this webinar. We hardly have dropouts in our webinar. We have webinars starting from 0 to 90 minutes. We haven't had a dropout rate that people experience in their webinars. And the reason is that we know the sequence. People on the other side expect a certain sequence without even knowing it. And they will resist you or log out of you if you do it any differently. And this is the sequence. The traditional ABC method told you to build a rapport, get about your solution, talk about yourself, talk about your company, talk about features, talk about benefits, try to some soft close thing, gather their objections, get over their objections, and finally at the end of 60th minute come to a closing statement. In the virtual environment, you won't get 60 minutes to make a pitch at all. You get all of 20 minutes, and the pitch plan process tells you this, that you can do this in 20 minutes. You can break the preoccupation with a big idea, talk more about the problem, forget the solution, make the problem bigger than the solution. If the problem is that big, and even if you have a solution that's small, people connect with the problem. So present your solution, present the upside proposition, present the economics, mechanics of how it works, the demo, talk about your team finally and get them to close. And all of this needs to happen in 20 minutes. And that's why I'm saying you must... See the virtual masterclass where we'll do these live pitch demos and presentations so that you can get the method to do it for yourself. So that, in a nutshell, is the pitch plan method. I'm excited always about presenting it, and I'm super excited about taking you through it come September 14. But in one of my mails, I told you that I will today also be talking about seven effects of deal making that you must need to create through your pitch process to be able to actually lead a person to closure. So during the pitch plan process, these are the seven effects that get created. The other side has to believe that you're a true expert. That's where I said about the positioning bit. They have to get an insight that you will be of huge value to them. And then you need to create scarcity just because the other person saying, yes, you can't be available because that communicates neediness and then you lose value. So how do you create scarcity? You got to reframe your competition is good. There's no point beating them up. You got to reframe them as good, but reframe the problem bigger and reframe yourself as the only one being able to solve that problem. 
People have got to trust you. So within those 20 minutes, you've got to establish trust. And if all of this happens, you won't get grinded on price and nitty gritties of the deal making. In fact, the idea is to move the positioning into a statement where the other side is, oh, when can we get started? Really, that's the emotion that should be bubbling on the other side, whether or not they say it, as long as you've got them there, that you'll get the deal. And that's the whole pitch plan process to build excitement with energy, create certainty so that you are closing more deals than you're not. And it can be done virtually. And in fact, I'll tell you something more. What I really like about the virtual environment, I found it really easy because we always knew this pitch plan method and stuff, and it gave us the perfect opportunity to start implementing it. I've never liked long meetings. If I might have met a few of you, if you remember or if you recollect, my business meetings, the longer it stretches, I always tell my team, the more danger it is of not closing it. So I love these 10, 15, 20 minute meetings. There's a simple process. You go through it, job done and over. So that's the best way, that's the best place to be in. And I want to take you there with me to get you here into this place. Now, I know people can feel skeptical about all of this. So there is one option with you, which is to stay put. Don't learn anything new. Stay invisible. Play small. Be in the same place this time next year when 80% of work is getting done virtually. Or the second option, and I would love for you to exercise this. Commit to being brave. Come with us. Learn how to position yourself into live videos and calls and make a huge impact this year right now, starting September 14th itself. Only for the next two days and only for the people who are here listening to this webinar. Go to changeonline.com. If you're interested in the course, there's a whole web page on virtual positioning masterclass out there. See, see, see out there. See what you like, what you don't like. We have told you about the entire program out there. And if you do happen to decide to sign up only for the next two days, there is this code on front in front of your screens, which is called Webinar 15. While you are checking out, enter that as the coupon code, and that gives you 15% off of the entire course price. But it's only going to be valid for the next two days as a special gift to you if you're going to be taking a decision. Now, much about this course. I can tell you we've done this course before and it creates absolutely enormous impact in people's life. That's what I'm excited about. There are not endless seats out there. There'll be some handful of people attending. So if you want to be one of them, rush to the side and get signed up. Uh, we'll be happy to answer all your questions. And should you be a corporate who's interested in this course and have bulk people to go to, please don't go end up signing on the website. Call us separately. We don't want multiple people from a single company there. Right. So that's about the course. That's about the opportunity that's <clears throat> that we wanted to present to you. We wanted to talk about the five C's. We wanted to talk about the pitch plan method and we wanted to talk about the virtual masterclass as well. We are on the other side to answer all your questions, whatever they may be. It need not be about the course. It can be anything related to how do you make a virtual impact and influence. I have had fun presenting to you and I'm just going to stop the sharing of screen so that we can be back live to answer all your questions. See you on the other side. So right, we are here and I think I'm going to just start seeing if there are any questions. Roli, do you have a question from someone? Or? So uh, the one on connectivity and connection that we were uh, talking about before Ankur had joined us uh, was something that was there. And then, you know, people appreciating about the connection part of it and the creativity part of the five C's. Uh, we are still looking for questions somewhere. But uh, meanwhile, what I have, which is good to go, is that uh, does these tips, whatever we have told to these two participants primarily, uh, do, do in our experience, they always work. So, so I, I, what I can say as of now for that is that, um, you know, some feedback from the audience I already have. And even for me as a user, it was clearly working and uh, I, I felt very happy as to, I won't call it a transformation per se, but whatever insight was available to both Ankur and uh, Abhishika there, it was quite a delight to see them change. So I'm sure that whenever you are also applying this, even if it's a small thing like, uh, you know, smiling and talking to just assuming one person or looking at the camera, it does create that impact certainly. And in our experience, it has always worked and for sure. So, so just try, why don't you try it out for yourself? You will know it better. So, so that would be my invite to you. So there's a question really, someone saying, I'm into the steel trading business and how can they be used in the line of our business? 
you can be uh, it's not about steel trading or it's not about uh, being any specific business as long as you are interacting with people virtually whether it's in a sales situation or a non sales situation i think the method is there to help you to guide you through into starting from a point a and moving into your desired point which is whatever you're trying to get out of that so the pitch plan method or even the virtual method is meant to take the other side along with you in a manner that is slightly more scientific than haphazard so making connections and as well as guiding them through to the completion of whatever it is that your goals for the conversation are so yes it will help whether it's a steel trading business or it's a aeroplane manufacturing business it's it's a universal kind of a process yeah and then what next i have on my screen is how to win over a customer so uh, i mean as chetan was just talking about those pitch method and about uh, you know closing a deal primarily how to have that everlasting impact in those 15 20 minutes so how to win over a customer uh, would obviously you know be a, a cumulative product of what you are presenting what you have for him that you know he is interested in and what is you know what is it that you know which need of him you are there to solve as far as the virtual mastery session what happens is that probably when he has more than one people who have that solution the if you are able to have that connection with him and if your product or if your proposition has that element of creativity in it if you have that frame controlling where you know you apply that method and in 15 20 minutes you are able to come to the close and you are able to take it to a point where there is a hook uh, you know that you can have that's the way to look for it and that's the way to uh, win for a customer to step into his shoes and yes with your of course confidence and your grip over the thing and so, let me give you another tip on how to win over a customer usually in especially in sales situations we have learned that we need to speak about ourselves our company our product our features and benefits and that's how to make a sale in 2020 that doesn't work that used to work in 1980 today you have to talk about the problem so you have to make people understand that you've understood the problem forget the solution if you can make the problem big enough and even if your solution doesn't solve it the other side feels that you've understood so it's always about the problem we've been incorrectly taught to think about solutions first make the problem bigger then position yourself as a credible expert that you can solve it and then move to the solution so that's the way to be able to do it virtually because when i'm talking about a problem i'm able to hold attention more than when i'm talking about myself and what i do and what i bring to the table is it possible to convey everything in 15 minutes so we've always tried this in lot of our presentations and lot of our products that we do and we've never been disappointed so yes we certainly would vouch for and uh, how much time span per se how much attention span you know most of the time we do have this problem of people being attention deficit so why not attempt to about 15 20 minutes is good enough our time gone are the days of those uh, i will, I will yeah. say it differently if you can't convey it in 20 minutes you're not getting the deal so go That's through in right. your mind run through all your one hour meetings which one of them got you the check it won't happen right. especially in this era when you're talking about virtually people schedule meetings only for about 30 minutes in zoom so if you can't get the job done in 20 minutes you need to learn how to do it and that's what the method really is about longish presentations longer than that one hour chats give a lot of room to people to pick holes and you don't want to do that you want to go with a crisp message that this is the problem i'm the expert to solve it this is how i'll do it and this is why you should trust me and it should not ideally take more than 10 to 15 minutes yeah and a quick tip for what chetan is saying and because we have ourselves you know implemented this for ourselves so just to share from that perspective it is always good to practice it out while there is a spontaneity to the conversation and a spontaneity to the perspective that the client and the customer would bring but that 10 12 minutes of whatever core delivery of your pitch presentation say it out practice it out and more when you are doing it virtually because all of us are kind of coping up to this environment so so it's always makes an impact to practice it out uh, would you offer one to one solution you offer a one on one solution for creating a strategy uh, if you are coming for the course and whoever is coming for the course you will be crafting yes your own pitch and your own method as to how this would apply in your situation uh in your industry with your customer so of course that will be done that's the central uh aim behind doing this session 
And not only that, it will go a step further in getting you to anticipate questions. And then it goes a step further that you actually go and do it and come back and reframe the whole thing with us again. So in a nutshell, yes. I know I've answered a long answer to a small question, but yeah, we'll be covering it. <laughs> Great, I think uh, as far as I can see on the screen, we can't have more volunteers. I mean, that was just to give a flavor. If we keep repeating that, uh, you, you yourself would not have a lot to learn from it because only as much as possible in that. Really no one is coming. Then let me take a moment because uh, these questions are coming uh, on the pitch plan method, right? Normally, when you are making a pitch or you're getting into a sales situation, you are talking about a very logical flow to a presentation and presenting facts and figures. Right now, science tells us that people who's on the receiving end is not receiving it very rationally. He is operating with a hundred old, hundred year old, something like a crock brain mindset where he's already decided he has to resist you because if he doesn't resist you, you will end up making a sale. So buyers receive it from that mindset. You can go on rambling about one hour and it will end up in a negotiation which has no end in sight. And the reason behind the pitch plan process, which we told about the big idea and retaining frame control, is you break that buyer's preoccupation with presenting something that is far greater than what he's thought about. And it has to be 20 minutes because 20 minutes is all the window before that crock brain kind of comes back into the buyer's mindset. So there's a scientific reason why we're saying 20 minutes, and that's the way that it, the pitch plan process has to really work. So uh, of course, you have to see more of it before you can kind of visualizes to how will you be able to apply it but that's the idea that we're doing this what is the crowd is too shy and is not interacting especially when it comes to college students so first of all i wouldn't think college students would be anything but shy but having said that uh, let's say even if there was a crowd which was not too interacting it could be because there is a still, you know, something that has not created that kind of an landing on them, that kind of an impact with them. So what Chetan was rightly talking about a while ago, that if you can magnify the problem, their space of what they are struggling with, that's the hook point, that's the context if they are able to relate to. There is no reason why uh, you would not have them interacting. And Chetan, you want to give people time. You got to give people time. If they are shy. Uh, you probably need to ask more questions about themselves and they'll take more time to open up. But the idea to have a conversation, whether the other side is shy or is supremely confident, if you're interacting with someone, ask questions. Don't tell them stuff. So ask questions. Figure out three or four questions so that you can pull people in. And when they're comfortable, then have another conversation. But yeah, I can get at what you're saying, that college students could be shy. They don't want to open up. But that's maybe because you haven't, uh, given them an idea yet that they're interested in, right? So if something interests me, if something is in my interest, even if I'm shy, I want to know more, so I'll have a question. So I think reframe your opening sentences or slides of your pitch, and you have to give them an idea which is in their interest, which kind of, even if I'm a shy person, it should invite me that I want to know more about this. So I think first correction would be to have your opening frame set correctly. And second will be to build in more questions than you normally do. Right. So sessions for the program would certainly be more than an hour. Uh, you know, one of the participants is asking and you can have all these details. They are on the website. Plus uh, even a brochure here post our webinar would be available to you for downloading, which has all the details of what are the sessions, when they are planned and how long they are. Always keep a buffer of about 30 minutes because sometimes with the practice coming in, sessions do extend. So, so yes, but they will be practice sessions and they will be longer than an hour. Yeah, it'll usually be two to three hours, depending upon how much interaction is happening, because we want to give a chance for everyone to make their pitches as well as a chance to everyone to kind of practice it and get feedback as well. So as I'm talking, I'm a little distracted because I'm kind of uploading the presentations onto the chat box. You can download it there. Uh, what we have on the handouts is the program brochure as well as the slides that we use today. If Some of you want to refer back to it. So it's just uploading and it should be available to you in a minute or so. Yeah, so it's all there now. Great, and even otherwise, post the webinar if you will have any questions. The, we have our contact details everywhere, so you can reach to any of the team member, and we'll be happy to take you through for that matter. So 
that's about it i think uh, and the sessions are supposed to be all online and all the details i think are available on changeonline.com and you should be able to get that yeah i don't think we have more questions do we yes no i think they the slides and the brochure is what they are asking for which has already been shared on the chat and uh, as it is the details are there on the website and you can get back to us for anything that you would want and uh, look forward to interacting with you again sometime Great. i think that so is yeah. i was just saying that no more questions as far as the chat window is concerned it's just rechecking yeah Right, great. So nice, nice to be here. Nice to have you all with us. Hope to interact with you again soon. So thank you. See you. Great. Thank you. Bye bye. I'll just keep this open for the next five minutes for you to download before ending it. So feel free. All right, guys. See you.